road rage. Many of us has experienced it on the road. We honk our horn, give them the finger, yell at the other driver, we cut them off, we race them, or worse. Some escalate into dangerous maneuvers, putting others in danger. Driving cars can give drivers a false sense of invincibility because they have a protective cage around them. Cars also make others more anonymous because other drivers are unknown to us, making it easier to negatively judge them for who they are or what their motivations are. Road rage in a car can ruin your day. Road rage in a motorcycle can ruin your life. Hey, how's it going people? Brown Brady here and thank you for tuning into my channel. And in this episode, I'm going to show you five ways that I avoid road rage on a motorcycle. Road rage is like a fight between two opponents using their cars as weapons and shields. You can imagine why road rage on a bike can be more costly than in a car. You're more likely to get injured or killed in a bike accident by yourself to begin with. This risk increases when it involves another vehicle because your potential opponent is driving a more massive vehicle. And so without further ado, here are five ways that I avoid road rage on a motorcycle. Number one, I wear the right attitude. Sure, a peaceful ride in an empty country road can be relaxing after a very stressful day at work. But in a very busy city setting, it may only take one careless driver to make you lose your cool. When I slip on my helmet and gear, I don't transform into a MotoGP racer weaving through traffic or a tattooed cruiser villain stereotype eyeballing everybody who stares. First of all, I can't ride like a GP racer anyway, so I'm not going to pretend that I can. And second, I don't fit the biker stereotype. But I always ride confidently with a positive attitude. Much like sailors know not to sail when they know bad weather is upon them, I don't ride when I'm upset or anxious because a confrontation with a driver will only make it worse. Number two, I accept that I am invisible. I don't have to be riding like a ninja. I know that I'll be invisible to drivers anyway. I accept that I'll get cut off, have my lane intruded or backed into. It's my duty to stay out of everybody else's way. When approaching an intersection, having cars waiting to turn into my lane, I assume that they are having a hard time judging my speed and distance because I don't have the same headlights as a car. This happens a lot in parking lots as well while drivers are hunting aggressively for parking spots. It will happen. So I must have evasive maneuvers and escape plans in place at all times. And when it does, I execute it and let the situation pass. There's no need to give them the finger because they can't see me anyway. Number three, I will assume that I will encounter a bad driver. Someone will be driving too slowly. Someone will be tailgating me. Someone will change lanes without signaling. I accept this before each ride. I encourage you to practice doing nothing after getting cut off instead of honking, flicking the finger, or tailgating. But I know some of you have onboard cameras, so if you caught it on camera, put it up for everybody to see. I know that only a very small percentage of drivers are also riders. This means many drivers don't know the hand signals, they don't know why I'm riding on a tire track instead of in the middle of a lane, and they don't know why I'm all geared up on a hot day. There will be drivers who think that motorcycles belong on the side of a lane like a bicycle, and they'll attempt to pass me and occupy my lane. Know that they don't teach this in driver's ed. Number four, I manage my spacing. I always keep a safe distance around me in motion and when stopped to avoid an accident in the first place. This is in the motorcycle handbook and it was also taught during my motorcycle safety course. More distance affords me more time to break, more space to make evasive maneuvers, and more time to escape from getting rear-ended. Also, keeping my distance avoids any confrontation with drivers who are already having a bad day. Who knows what they might be thinking if I keep tailgating them. If they hit their brakes to piss me off, I could be headed to a world of pain. Number five, I try to be courteous. If I'm in doubt about who should go first in an always stop, I direct the next car to go ahead of me. I don't stand a chance if that driver gets pissed that I took his or her turn at an always stop, if they decide to clip my bike or worse. If I encounter a slow moving vehicle, I keep my distance to allow them to take their time instead of tailgating them. I never know if they're new drivers, a returning driver, or suffering a medical episode. 
And finally, if a driver offers a good gesture, for example, they offer their lane during heavy traffic, I give them a nod or I wave to say thanks. Road courtesy improves my attitude on the road. So if I rode off in a bad mood, this is one way to get me back to a positive mindset. As an aside, I'm not telling you to ride in fear, but you should be riding with confidence. You are on a motorcycle after all, and therefore are much quicker and more nimble than cars. Don't be afraid to use this advantage to execute your evasive maneuvers, but move on. It's done. Forget about it. It's time to be ready for the next one. In closing, I manage road rage by preparing my mind, avoiding stressful situations, and maintaining a positive attitude. As far as getting out of an existing road rage situation, I wouldn't know because I've never been in that situation yet. I think this is a completely different topic altogether. However, if you've been there and you have any tips and tricks to avoid that situation, please let us know. And if you have any road rage experiences that you'd like to share and you'd like to tell about it, let us know in the comment section. And if you like this video, please hit that like button or better yet, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video. As always, ride safe and thanks for watching. You look like a bobblehead.